Okay, so today we're going to talk about the rise of the nourished woman. Um, and really what this is to talk about is just seeing this um, flourishing of women that are whole and embodied. And that's uh, like, that's a work in progress for all of us ongoing. I think that's our like life journey really and why we're here. Um, but today I just wanted to touch on the importance of that and really how that um, impacts your business, right? Um, Okay, so a little bit about me. My name is Danny. Um, so I am the owner and creative director of Velamora. We are a female owned and operated creative studio. Um, we're currently based out of Austin, Texas, and we're expanding to San Diego, California. That's just where my soul feels called. And um, yeah, and so uh, a little bit about me. I am a cat lover. This is Hobbs. He is our mascot for Velamora. So when you check out our stuff, you'll see him make an appearance. Um, you know, we do photography, we do video animation, and for select brands, we're a full service studio. Um, I am a lover of nature. I am really big into empowering women. Um, and so I had briefly given a synopsis of this, but Amy, I'll share a little bit with you. Um, what we're here to do is really shift the narrative for women um, that are receiving marketing from brands and um, shifting it to be more inclusive, healthier, more celebratory, and um, something that truly makes us feel good and mirrors back what we as women, the collective want to see versus like what advertising wants to drill into our minds. Um, I once upon a time did a sabbatical. I did a whole eat, pray, love journey. And I went to Thailand and Bali. And that was really the beginnings of finding um, my path, leaving the corporate world and getting to where I am today. And so I think a theme that you're going to see in a lot of what I'm sharing is that I am someone that leads with, um, heart's going to sound cheesy, but really with my soul and with my gut, I really like to listen to my intuition and I really run my business from this place, uh, for better or for worse, but so far we're still up and running. So I would say we're doing pretty good. Uh, this is my team. These are my girls. Um, and so we are really big on being female operated. Um, and so this kind of ties back to that idea of creating a world that's uh, healthier, more, you know, happy and kind for women. And I think that it starts with bringing more women voices into marketing and advertising, right? It's been somewhat of a lopsided conversation. And two, I really believe that not only can we create, like live our mission and what we do, but also in the people that I employ, I can give them opportunities and build them up. And so, um, you know, I just, I just want a happier world for women. Uh, and then last but not least, this is baby Danny and she's up there for a reason. Um, so, um, part of what we'll talk about today is that all of us have a little inner child. And so I've actually, and just so that you know that I'm not full of it, I'll show you. I started this practice. If you can see my phone, that is, uh, um, my picture and, Part of that is because I really do feel that a lot of these conversations that are happening, whether through advertising or just the climate in general, impact us as women and with who they're really impacting is that little girl, right? And so having that open relationship with her and healing that really le le like leads us to a place to be better leaders ourselves, right? Because again, when we feel whole, embodied, full, we're able to sort of pour into everyone else, but we can also make decisions and lead our businesses from a place of like, self-belonging, which also gives you that sort of like solidity and like confidence in what you're doing. Okay, next. All right. So as self-employed women, we are three times more likely um, to experience mental illness. Uh, and this is uh, in comparison to our male counterparts and then to um, our other ladies that are otherwise employed by someone else. Um, so why does this happen? Well, really for two reasons, because we're women and because we're entrepreneurs as women, you know, we're subject to societal impacts, pressures, inequalities in the systems, gender roles, just all this like blah, 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 muddled up crap in our brain that we feel that we need to uphold these constructs, you know, and other parts that we genuinely want to uphold responsibilities that we love and embrace. But just as women, we're so multifaceted and dimensional. There's a lot that is um, asked of us, right? And then as entrepreneurs, I mean, I think we all knew this wasn't going to be an easy journey, but it really comes with this roller coaster, right? And um, unfortunately for us as female entrepreneurs, um, the landscape isn't exactly equal. Shocker. Uh, you know, we have less access to resources, to financing. There's a gender bias when, you know, we potentially pitch our business and are looking for funding where we're looking, looked as 
um, riskier investments than our male counterparts, you know, and then of course there's unequal pay and or maybe the expectation of unpaid labor. Um, so really it's almost like the journey of being an entrepreneur is already challenging, but because of, you know, who we were born as and uh, how society currently operates, um, our challenges are amplified. And that's not to invalidate anybody else's journey. It's just also being able to give ourselves grace and acknowledgement of what we're doing really is like an act of like activism, but also like straight up like courage, self-belief, just so many things. And sometimes I think that that gets lost in our everyday because we have these lofty goals. And just remember if you're like standing in this right now and being a woman entrepreneur, you're already like killing it okay and doing like something super rebellious and huge rebellious but you know what i mean and, uh, against the current um so some of the most common feelings um that are expressed by women entrepreneurs um, are feelings of anxiousness loneliness feeling stressed and feeling unmotivated um okay and so why that's important is because your business is only as abundant as you are. So in order for, and, and this might be, um, I don't want to say this as like a, like there's like scientific stuff behind it, but this is genuinely my belief. If you are not whole, if you are not abundant uh, in your uh, physical, emotional, mental, your business is going to express that. Um, you know, one is not without the other. And I also believe that that's the beauty of doing business together as women, right? Like when we connect and we come into community or even into just business contracts, what have you, I think that we have an innate understanding that we are showing up as human beings and we're here to recognize one another in our whole expression, not um, compartmentalizing that you're a business owner and then you're uh, a mother, a daughter, or what have you, you know? And and so um, if we turn that on ourselves, we need to be able to see that, you know, Danny needs to be 100% if she expects, you know, Velamora to be 100%. So then what does that mean? Um, so I made this kind of like short and I would love you guys to participate in this. Um, but these are some of my practices and I'll tie them back to some of those things that, you know, I shared were being experienced. So when it comes to anxiety, um, you know, I think we can all attest to having that, whether that is, um, activated, uh, due to, uh, scarcity and, or fear of the financial environment, you know, like this upcoming recession that's looming, uh, it could be anxiety due to even personal reasons. It could be anxiety due to self-imposed ideas ideas of the shoulds, you know? Um, and so really when, when I'm feeling this feeling and to be quite transparent with you guys, yesterday, I was driving from Austin to Houston and I was just in tears listening to a podcast. Right. Um, and, and it's because I think this really is a roller coaster, you know? Um, and I think my MO tends to be like, it's okay. It's all going to be fine. You know, almost like uh, spiritual bypassing. And what I chose to do yesterday as I was like driving, I was like, just let it out, just like cry. And I didn't need to attach a story to it. I wasn't sure why it was coming up. I mean, I could guess there's a few things going on, but instead I was like, let me just release this. Right. Um, and then that way, maybe once it's out, maybe in that experience of just being with my emotion, maybe something will come through that'll allow me to identify what this might be. So that's what these first, this first one's about rooting for me is this idea of coming back inward, right? A lot of what causes anxiety are these external factors um, and, and it's us internalizing them and then creating a story around what does this external factor mean about me, mean about my circumstances? And then if we get really into the spiral, we start to extrapolate that into, oh, and then that means that this will happen. And in six months, this will be this. And it's like, this just grows and grows and grows. And then before you know it, you're literally like in the fetal position, rocking back and forth. Um, so rooting um, for me is taking that moment to create the awareness and acknowledge, okay, this is an emotion. Um, and I can sit with that, 
You know, uh, there's no inherent good or bad in this emotion. I can just acknowledge it and allow it to sort of be in my body. You know, for, for all of us, I think there's different practices that might make us feel a little more comfortable. Some people really enjoy walking. Uh, some people enjoy, you know, just breath work, maybe just lay on the ground and cry, maybe scream, you know, but find those ways where you can come back in and detach from the story that's creating the anxiety so that you can have a little bit of space from this idea and this emotion. And in that space will hopefully be some clarity as to, you know, what's going on, um, which le leads us into soothe. So when we kind of have a download or clarity around where this um, anxiety may be coming from, right? Once we strip away the story, um, so let's, for example, uh, let's make something up, um, or I guess it's not so made up. So imagine, <laughs> uh, you know, one of your clients, uh, um, decides to go in a different direction. Right. And so the immediate anxiety that might cause, or even the, the later anxiety, once it starts to settle in, this is a reality, uh, you might go into scarcity and start being like, oh my goodness. Okay. How am I going to make ends meet? I have this rent. I have people that I owe money to, like, like the people I want to pay for their jobs that they're doing for me, or just even the software to run my business, whatever, even buy myself lunch, you know? Um, and so all of a sudden that's creating anxiety inside of you because you're having this feeling of lack. And if we're not careful, we may just think it's all about, oh, I lost a client and looking externally, I need to go find another one. And um, what else can I do to, you know, make that extra money? or whatever. And what we're missing is really being able to ident identify like, yes, there, there was a loss, of course, and it's okay to acknowledge that. But what's really creating that sense of anxiety um, and however it is real that we have um, responsibilities we need to tend to in the real world, um, it often comes from a place of security, right? Uh, because of this loss, we've lost a little bit of our security and now we feel, we don't feel safe. How am I going to pay rent? If I can't pay rent, I don't have shelter. If I don't have shelter, I'm not safe. And so while acknowledging that and getting to the root of it is not going to change the circumstance, it can at least help with creating a, a safer like headspace from which you can act um, a little more like intentionally as opposed to reactively and making decisions out of like um, desperation. Um, and I think, um, if, and, you know, feel free to like do the little raise hand thing or comment, but, um, I know I can vouch for the times that I've taken on projects and or made decisions from a place of like, Oh my goodness, I just need, I just need some money. Those clients, my goodness, just no, 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 no. I would have rather, I don't know, figured something else up as opposed to then sacrificing even more of my emotional and mental well being. Um, in exchange for the money, right? And it often just ends up not being good work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So really it's like by doing one thing out of just being um, uh, reactive, we end up creating even bigger, I think, ripple effects, right? So if we can identify, okay, I don't feel safe, how can I soothe? What is it that I can do for myself to create a sense of safety within? Uh, and for all of us, that might look different. You know, it may be, um, you know, like I said, for some of us, it may be walking, for some of us, it may be breathing. If I need to feel safe, is there something that I can say no to in my external world that then will give me a little more space if, it, if we're talking money-wise? Like, what is it that I can do that'll just create that like respite inside of all of this like anxiety that I'm feeling. Um, the next one that I have is shake. And so it may seem weird, but here's the thing. If you notice an animal that gets stunted in the wild, like feels a moment of um, uh, a danger, uh, they'll react and then they'll shake it off. That's part of the nervous system coming back into feeling okay. As human beings, we have a tendency to be just like, mm, of posturing. That's the best way I can put it. We are, we don't want to look vulnerable. We don't want to look like we are feeling a certain way or maybe stumbled, whatever it might be. It's like our recovery rate for that is so quick, just so that we can continue to sort of like, um, shield 
truly the vulnerability that's happening or just shield that we're humans, you know? And so shaking doesn't have to be shaking. I mean, yes, it's one of the, you know, uh, easiest and most accessible things to do. If you have like a conversation that just sends that shooting energy down your spine and you're like, oh, you know, just like whew, shaking it out, that'll definitely help to release that. But, you know, if you're more into like static dancing or whatever, have you just like allow your body, like understanding that anything we experience is just energy, then use that same principle to like, whew, get rid of it, move to the wave, do your thing, you know, just like actually allow yourself to move without restraint and that'll help to release. Step back. Okay, so here's a story from when I did go on my uh, sabbatical. Uh, so a lot of the times we have these problems and they feel like earth shattering and they feel like, oh my goodness, what's the solution? And again, we start to spiral. When I went on my sabbatical, it was kind of like an impulsive thing, kind of, kind of not. I've been thinking about it, but, um, you know, living in the Bay Area, uh, being a creative, uh, I didn't have make or have a ton of money, uh, but um, I decided to go on the sabbatical anyway. So I was like, yo, let's do it. And my initial plan was go to Thailand for a month and come home. Um, and while I was out there, I started looking for trade jobs. And so I'm a certified yoga teacher and I was like, well, maybe I'll teach some yoga and, um, find some way to, you know, do something while I'm out here. And what ended up coming through was a mother daughter duo that was looking for a, um, photographer that enjoyed yoga, that would be willing to accept pay, um, through, um, a place to stay. So room and board. But here was it, not the catch, it was actually the opportunity. It was in Bali. And so I was like, sure, okay. And so I looked at the visas to go to Bali and you know they offered different ones and the longest one was two months. And I was like, let's go for two months. You know, like at this point in my life, I had just left corporate America. I was finding myself and I was like, eh, I don't have anywhere else to be. Might as well go on this journey. Um, so I went on the journey naturally, you know, if any of us here do finance, this may not be the approach and I'm not giving financial advice, but I just went with it and I was like, I'll figure it out. I'll do trade sessions. I'll, I'll find ways of generating income. Um, you know, maybe I'll freelance some graphic design work. That's what I was doing at the time. So I was like, it'll all be fine. One day I went on a little day trip and I took a Gojek, which is their version of Uber, but you're all like on a little scooter with someone. And so I went to a nearby town on the Gojek and had myself a little day. And I went to go get some cash out so I could take a Gojek back to where I came from. And when I go to the ATM, lo and behold, Danny has like nearly no money. And I was like, whoo, that's a reality check. And so I was like, okay, take a step back. I walked home uh, along the beach. So it was a beautiful site uh, and it was safe. Uh, don't worry. And it was about an hour walk home. And I just spent the whole time trying to calm my nervous system and give myself perspective. You know, I had like maybe a couple hundred dollars or whatever. I was like in Bali money, I'm balling. So I'm like, that's okay. So I'm like, I have enough for today. I have enough at least for this week. Breathe, you know, literally if worse comes to worse, you know, like, you know, it's not like I'm alone in the world, right? There's something that could be done, right? Uh, even though that's probably not the route that I would want to take. If push came to shove, you can always ask for help. So I'm like, it's okay. Just breathe. So I walk home for an hour. I go to the place that I'm staying and I go to sleep. I wake up the next day. So this was, um, around like March or April of 2019, uh, which is tax season. And so I wake up the next day, I got my tax return and I had $3,000 in the bank. Woo! And like I said, if a couple hundred is like balling and Bali 3000, I was like, okay, we are set. And that helped me get through the rest of my time abroad. So for me, that was one of like the most like important lessons that I feel like the universe gave me in that moment, because it was like enough for me to handle, but I've extrapolated that learning to the rest of my like entrepreneurial journey. Um, because there are so many times where we might look at the bank account or we might look at something and we just get knots in our belly. And really it's probably because we're thinking not just about today or just about the short term, we're thinking about all the other things that, you know, the responsibilities, but if we take a step back and remember so much can happen in 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, you know, um, you might just receive that one email that you needed offering you a project. So just to, again, coming back to giving yourself that space so that you don't feel like I got to control it all. I got to know the solution today because oftentimes those actions that we're trying to take while they're in for good intention, because we're trying to keep, 
you know, ourselves safe, they also create more of that anxiety because life is not within our control, right? Sometimes we're just kind of riding the wave. Danny, um, I want to hop in really fast Yeah, and share an experience that I had because do. I feel like this is like so fitting. Um, so Lindsay, who's also on the call, um, she is a good friend of mine. We talk every single week and there was like, I think it was maybe like a month and a half ago and we were just having a conversation and I'm just like, so stuck. I'm feeling super, super stuck in what I want to do. And I feel like my why for why I started like minded, which is like really to create a place for women, regardless of their income or the ability to kind of like join a community was just for them to feel like they matter. And there was a place for them. So that was like, so thrown out the window because I was so focused on money and like this was a paid subscription at first. And how many subscribers do I have? And, oh, are they like staying subscribed? Why are they unsubscribing? How do I get? And so it was all focused around money. And it was on our call where we were just like, maybe I should just make it free. And within 24 hours, I made the platform and the whole community completely free. And I felt like I could see again, like there was so much clarity in how I want to build like-minded collective and there's monetization opportunities where I don't have to charge for the platform. Mm -hmm. And those ideas would never have come to me if I hadn't made it free and like actually Mm -hmm. focused on what I wanted to provide. And somebody asked me like the other day, they were like, Oh, you know, I want, I want to pay to be a week. Oh, newsletter subscriber. I was like, okay, like that things are coming now to me. Whereas before it wasn't even an option. So I think Mm. like everything that you've been saying is just like so resonating to me because I'm like, wow, this is like not worrying about money as much as it is important and I need to make some, but when you kind of throw it out the window and focus on like what your true definition of starting your business is, everything falls into place eventually. Maybe not in 24 hours, like your tax return check, but it does. (laughs) (laughs) I think that was just the universe really doing me a solid on that one. But I completely agree. And I think, you know, the the barrier can be money. It can be our own, like I said, self-imposed ideas, those shoulds. I mean, you know, it's it's a it can look many different ways, right? And I think as soon as we remove, like you were saying, those limitations or the idea of like this is how the plan needs to look. We allow space for redirection, for clarity, downloads, what have you to then, like you said, get inspired with things that we may not even have seen or considered because we had blinders. That was the path, you know? And I feel like in my experience, really the universe, God, whatever you practice, we are spoken to honestly, sometimes by running into walls. Right. And that's how we experience it. But really the, what it's, you know, that's the gentlest way that we can be handheld into the right directions, maybe because sometimes we do get so attached um, as human beings that what redirects us needs to jolt us a little bit, but that's just the language of, you know, spirit, let's say. Um, so rest. Um, so this is one that I feel for us women and society, specifically in the States, but definitely women, we really struggle with. Um, and I think it kind of comes back to another construct that we have. And, um, I know for me, this is definitely deeply rooted. Um, and as I've been doing my healing, I've been trying to sort of like remove this, but it's this idea that you need to hustle in order to be abundant, or you need to hustle to not be lazy. You need to hustle to have worth. Basically, you just got to hustle and that's what your life is for. And it is such an unhealthy idea because it's not true. First and foremost, you're worthy just because you breathe and exist. Your presence alone is so worthy. You know, um, a lot of people, and I think the shift that we're seeing that's being demonstrated is abundance can come with ease. And I think that that's a rewiring that we need to do, uh, that you can uh, play smarter, not harder, right? Um, and so I, so I think that rest is definitely important. And two, this is also part of building that relationship with your body. And again, creating that space where you're able to listen because we're, when we're so busy, kind of like giving ourselves um, direction or like things that we have to do, we're not listening, right? And um, rest is sometimes what 
the most important thing that we can do so we can continue to be effective, right? Um, and two, sometimes in rest, that's when um, the downloads end or the clarity comes, right? Like how many times have you found yourself spinning on something and you're like, okay, like, oh, I'm going to figure it out and you're pushing and you're pushing. And the minute that you release, boom, all of a sudden you had the idea that you've been trying to like push out of your brain and it just needed a little space and time. Right. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you guys, my journaling practice is like a daily thing now. And it is one of my favorite things. It's one of the things that has helped me gain so much clarity into my limiting beliefs, into kind of like going back to those like constructs, right? Just getting clarity around all these things that happen to be constantly spinning around in my mind that often don't get rest. And so I think there's like a I'll say for now twofold and maybe we'll turn out, it'll be more things. But so the first part of the fold is getting to know yourself better. The second part is if you have something that is nagging you in your mind, writing it down is a way of sort of like releasing it and giving the mind rest because you don't need to latch onto it anymore. It's on that piece of paper. If you need to come back to it and rethink about it, you know, whatever it might be, it's right there. It's not going to be lost somewhere in your mind, you know? Um, so writing really is so amazing. And another beautiful part about writing is also um, coming back and revisiting it. Um, I think that for me, um, I've kept a journal for, for some time now, and it's really interesting to look back on it, you know, and like see Danny talking to Danny <laughs> about what was going on and then also build like like admiration for that person. Right. Because she surprises me and I'm like, damn girl, you knew that, Ooh, you know, and like, you know, it kind of just like helps that. And so once again, I think so much of being like a good, like a fearless wholehearted leader is having that, that, um, that self-belonging and that, like that confidence of self. And we build that by actively, you know, having a relationship with ourselves and writing helps to separate us, uh, you know, cause you know, um, we are the conscious and we're also like the person acting in this life. And so once you're writing, you can kind of see yourself as those two entities and have that relationship. Um, recharge. Um, I think this is kind of like tied to rest, so I won't speak too much about it, but the, for me, the only difference too, I guess, in recharging is also the idea of finding inspiration. So as someone who's in the creative space, I personally am also, I think just by nature creative, I love creating, but what I noticed at one point in my experience was that I was feeling a little like drained and I, and I was stopped creating for the sake of creation or for the sake of just being happy about it. I was creating constantly like on a brief or on a deadline or for a client and constantly judging what I was creating. You know, I had lost that sort of like spark and happiness of just doing what I love. And so recharge to me also speaks to whatever our disciplines are, whatever our hobbies are coming back to those things and just doing them for the simplicity of enjoying doing the thing, not because you got to make money, not because you got to do it for someone else, but just because it brings you joy. And I feel like just feeding your soul in that way will then come through in your other parts of your job, right? Cause you're just like a happy little soul. Um, oh, connect. Sorry about the spelling there. Um, connect. So when it comes to loneliness, right? I mean, obviously being entrepreneurs, I think can be difficult. I think it's hard sometimes for other people to relate. I mean, like, I don't know if any of you have ever been told, well, why don't you go get a job if you're so stressed about money? <laughs> and it's kind of like, Ooh, because that would be a betrayal <laughs> to myself, to my dream, you know? And so, um, so I feel like finding your people is really important. Um, and, you know, and it also could be entrepreneurs. I have found extremely helpful finding other female entrepreneurs. I found so like, you know, nourishing to me, but two, um, it could even just be subsects of like that. Maybe if they're not like a entrepreneur, maybe they're very spiritual and we can talk about, you know, some practices, breath work, et cetera, or maybe they're also on their healing journey and are reading attached just like I am. And so we're going to go talk about attachment styles for an hour, like stuff like that feeds my soul. And that might not be true for everyone. But again, once you sort of figure out what is it that feeds me, what is it that gives me that feeling of connection, of belonging, of not being alone, then you can actively seek that out to give yourself a little bit of that and be able to continue without feeling so lonely. Move ties back to shake, but this is more just on like the actual idea of like, you know, it doesn't have to be a workout, but really, again, we are energetic beings. So we need movement in order to release, in order to calibrate, and um, even just to internalize and um, not interpret, but um, 
I can't think of the, another I word, but it was uh, just kind of like to be able to understand and sit there at life on eyes and I assimilate with the world around us. Sometimes being in the body is really helpful. And so what I have found uh, through movement is that oftentimes if it's yoga or like, I really love spin um, when I'm in my body actively, it allows me just by the nature of what I'm doing to withdraw from the mind. And so again, it's just kind of like that rest, even though I'm actively moving, it just helps me to take a step back read. Um, so I think this goes back to the idea of inspiration. If you had told me as a kid that I would ever write, read on a list of things to do for self-care, I would have been like, you're crazy. Like my dad used to have to like, try and like barter with me to get me to read. I just did not love it. But now it's just such a nice way of, um, just a different way of like consumption. And that's what I like to think about. Like everything in our world is consumption, whether you're on Instagram or you're watching TV or you're reading or you're listening to a podcast, you're constantly consuming ideas, right? And I think it's just nice to, um, for me for reading, it's a, it's another way of consumption that oftentimes lets me control a little bit more of that experience. You know, I have the, I'm able to put the visuals to it. I'm able to hear the voice that's reading. Um, and so, uh, there's just something peaceful about it again, that allows me to sort of go on this journey and, and a little bit of, um, detaching again from the external, uh, and coming back to, um, things that really feed my soul. Um, and then last but not least in ball, you mentioned it going back to your why, um, you know, in all the noise and all the pressures, we kind of forget like, why did I even get started? Like I was talking to my friend on the same car ride yesterday and I was like, I am tired. I feel like I'm being kicked over and over again, you know, and I know it's going to be okay, but this is just how I feel today. And then, you know, when I go back to my why, when I think about my girls, when I think about this moment right now, like, it's like, I'll take more kicks, bring it on because I, I really am so passionate. I mean, please don't, but like, <laughs> you know, if that's what it is, then that's okay. Right. And so coming back to those feelings allows me to be like, okay, like, and also too, I think like remembering if this wasn't my path, then, um, well, one, then I wouldn't be here, but two, then I wouldn't be able to handle this, which lets me know that if I am on this path, I can handle this. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah. So coming back to that, why really, really helps and just really helps us to reignite the commitment with which we started. And two, uh, like Imbal said, it gives us clarity into, um, you know, if something isn't working, if something's feeling like draining on us, let's go back to the why. Maybe there's information there that'll help us to redirect and um, move forward uh, with more energy. Um, so this is just a closing thing, which is make yourself the first order of business. Um, you know, coming back to that idea of like, if we're not whole and, and feeling really good in ourselves and our business can't be whole and abundant and feeling good in itself. So you are number one. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. I love all those. And it's so funny. Cause like, I was thinking like, what an awesome list you put together, but there's so many things like like yesterday, um, I was, I really focused for like an hour and a half on something that I'd been putting off. And I just stood up and I told my husband this, I was like, I want to put a yoga mat, like in our office, just to like move for five minutes, you know, <laughs> um, just to move for five minutes. Like, and so movement was one. And then I finished and I was like, you know, I have like another 30 minutes. I feel like maybe I should just read a little bit, but those aren't things that I would think to put out there, they're just subconscious, but it's so nice to, I took a screenshot of the list you, you put because it's so nice to have them laid out or sometimes you're just like, I need something. I don't know what it is. Like maybe I need to shake myself off or like mm -hmm. touch my toes or something or breathe or, you know? Um, so I love that you had that list. Um, cause that's going to be really useful. Amazing. I'm so glad. Hi, Susie. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just wanted to unmute really fast. This was awesome. I love it so much. And it was just really inspiring. I feel like it really helps you get into the mindset of you can do anything. So oh, thank good. you. Good. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions for Danny? Any business questions? Um, I want Farah and Lindsay to do an intro, um, yeah. really fast since you guys showed up a little late and we all want to know about your businesses. So Farah, do you want to go first? 
Hi, how are you? I'm sorry I ran out. I came in late. I'm here in North Carolina, Asheville, and I'm so grateful to have, uh, I saw this email and I, you know, you always subscribe to things and you always like signing into things on Instagram. And I decided to join. I was like, oh, it was definitely like divine connection because I love connecting with women. It's one of the things that I love the most. I own a wellness franchise and I have friends all over the world and I love learning from one another, especially as moms. So we can up level this community of entrepreneurs and support each other. That's really my mission. And um, I'm happy that I'm here. And, um, you know, let, let's follow each other. I just follow you um, in Val so we can like follow each other and connect. I definitely want to talk to you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. And then put your social so other people can find you too in the chat. Hi, Lindsay. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Lindsay. Um, my business is called The Park and we're a consulting agency that helps moms and businesses to be more supportive of moms so that they can thrive in the workplace and that we can have more gender equity in the workplace because we need it um and involved texted me was like you need to be in this workshop and I'm so glad she did <laughs> so that's why I joined late um because like everything you said has like re I really need right now I was in a really bad car accident about a month ago and like I like involved was just like forcing my business into trying to make money and it, I was like going so far away from like what I needed as a human and also for my business. And like, this is exactly what I need to remind myself of is like, put myself first and do all of the things that make me feel whole so that I can bring my best self. So thank you. I love that you guys. And the one thing that came up for me that maybe is something that I want to share, like that might be helpful. So when we did yoga teacher training, they introduced us to lion's breath. It's going to look extremely silly, but I promise you it like really helps. So, uh, and this is like a quick one that if you can excuse yourself to go to the restroom or whatever. Um, so the idea is you take a really big inhale. And when you exhale, you're going to stick out your tongue. Like as if you're like at the doctor going at, ah, and you're just, just going to exhale really strong. So it's going to be like, and you go, so it looks really weird. I promise, but, um, it is a cleansing breath. And so if you do that three times, and I think too, maybe it's like the, the, the cumulative, uh, experience of that, you, you feel silly. So it maybe brings up a better energy, but it does release. Um, and so, so, uh, yeah, if you're ever feeling those feelings of tenseness, that's at least one thing I can give you guys. It's like actionable that you can go and like, do it literally in like five seconds or something. Um, but Thank you guys all for being here. It like means so much. And like, um, while this isn't while I do full time, I'm so passionate about just seeing other females like succeed. And, um, and I really do believe that like all of us together, like we have such amazing social impact for our, um, you know, collective experience here on this earth. And so I just appreciate you all. And I'm, I, I'm glad this resonated. Yay. Danny, do you have socials that we can follow? I do. Um, I will re -put it, post it down here.